talk a little bit about preparing for the shoot with your talent. Of course, they're going to have to have clothes to wear, so that means their wardrobe. So you may want to think about when you make your script, when you make your shot schedule, maybe you can think what kind of clothes or costumes would you like the people in the video to wear. Maybe you'd like them to wear a certain color, like red or green or blue. Of course, be careful with green if you're using a green screen. Or maybe you would like their hair to be a certain way. Make sure you mention that. Or maybe you're not really sure, but you know you want it to be formal or informal, or you want them to dress as if it's hot weather or cold weather. Make sure you tell them these things beforehand and they can get them ready. You can also have wardrobe ready on your location, that is different clothes that they can use for different shots, uh, if you have that available, or you can tell your talent to bring different changes of clothes. Of course, that's possible. You need to check your lighting with your talent. Every talent has a different kind of look or complexion or color of their hair or the clothes they're wearing. So you need to check the lighting for that person and make sure it's working. You need to be very clear about the body position in the shot. And this is something people often forget about. You need to tell your actors where to stand, where to turn, where to look, and where to walk. Otherwise, they're going to make it up and that may not be the way you want. Now one thing that I often talk about that bothers me a lot is headspace. And what is this headspace thing? Right? The headspace is the space above the head inside the shot. So headspace for me right here is this little space I've got here. Now the tendency is when people shoot a video they think you should shoot with the head way down here and this is space is empty. And when you shoot your video like this with the head close people get nervous. They say, why am I so tall? Or where is the space above my head? Why don't I have more space? Well, the reality of shooting video is to use the whole screen, to use the whole frame. Don't waste the space. Medium shots like this, close-up shots like this should get close. Don't be afraid to get close to the head or even cut the head off in a close-up like this. That space is headspace. You want it to be small or none. You want to get a nice, clear face shot, or you want to get a medium shot, but you don't want to be showing a bunch of top that's wasting space. Very amateur mistake people make. Now, if you're shooting yourself, then you can make sure don't waste the headspace. But if a company is shooting for you, you should tell them, don't give me a lot of headspace. And they may not do that or they may do that because they don't know what customers want and they're going to give what customers want. So if many customers want headspace, they give headspace. So you need to watch out for that. Have some mirrors ready and mirrors are really useful for your talent to check out their makeup to make sure they look okay. They're very anxious to do that. And on a shoot you can have basic makeup cosmetic supplies. Now, you don't need to be an expert, but there are some basic cosmetics you can keep with you, such as the uh, fabric to get oil off of the skin, the paper that can help clean off your skin, the base foundation to help the complexion or to take away pimples or other uh, red spots or spots on the skin. Uh, you can also have makeup to help with the contrast of the skin. And of course, if the talent knows this, you can tell them to bring makeup with them, but it might be helpful to have some, especially if you have a studio set like we do here. So we keep this makeup right in our cabinets for use. The makeup is fairly basic. We have things like skin cleaner, foundation, some powder, and then we also have some highlighter for underneath the eyes. That's one of the big problems is you get those dark lines underneath your eyes and that comes from being too tired or sometimes on top of your eyes. They can come from allergies but there is makeup that can cover that up very well so maybe have that ready. Here we see our talent. These are some actors we hired to come in and do a project for us and they're practicing here so you give them time to practice and while they're practicing you can give them feedback. 
And here we have our talent being recorded by our cinematographer. So he's shooting the video and they're actually acting now. now of course, they don't look very professional, do they? They look like uh, young students. Well, that's because the frame is shooting the frame like this. Of course, we're not seeing the rest of their body. And we asked them to pretend or act like students. The project we were working on was for students and we wanted them to look like students and that's what they did. And here you can see our talents preparing. So we have all those lights on them which can be very tiresome for them and they can get ready and practice. Now let's take a look at some examples. So this is a video shoot that we did for a department I work at in the university. So it's some promotional material and we're trying to help students understand a little bit of training. So we have two actors here, an actor and an actress, and this is what the company came back. So we paid a company, a production company, to go do this, and they shot inside our, my lab, but the company did the shooting. They sent the people to manage it. And here you can see what we get back. We have the green screen has been replaced with a background. So we get this back and we can then give them feedback. They'll say, what do you think's wrong with it? Or what do you like? Or what do you want changed with it? So let me go ahead over this very quickly and show you a couple ideas. One thing that often is a detail to pay attention is that headspace. So here you can see it. It's very normal that the production company will give you all of that headspace. And they'll also give you lots of space around your subjects. I much prefer that the headspace be reduced and that we get much closer to our subjects. So in this example here, you can see the difference. I think that this shot is much better and this shot is not that great. Now there's other things to change here, such as the focus and the background is not that great, but we'll just talk about framing for now. Here's another example. So the, com the production company has given us this shot and it seems to me that the headspace for a close-up is just too much. I'd rather have this head cut off a little bit and get much closer because after all, this actor, he's acting. When you're far away like this, the face becomes small, very hard to see. But when you're close up, when you're close in, you can see the face much better. And the actor, they're acting. That's the whole point. And I really like this getting the facial expression so you can see it, you can feel what they're feeling. Much more helpful. After all, if you pay for an actor or an actress, you might as well get what you pay for, which is that emotional feeling. Here's another example. So this was the B shot compared to the A shot, right? So shot counter shot. So first we're looking this way, and now we're looking this way. And this was the shot back from the company. It seemed to me like just too much space here for no good reason. I wanted to get much closer on the face. So I think that's a much better shot, and this is not such a great shot. Okay, now the reason I bring this up is, of course, I like to talk about framing, but I think the main point is if you're going to have talent, you really want to show your talent. And how do you show your talent? Not by having them far away and showing their body, but having them close up and showing their face. The emotion is what actors are good at. So if you pay for an actor, use them. Get the most you can out of them by having that very tight shot and not having a lot of head space. Okay, so in the end, we ended up also giving our production company some feedback. So we sent this to them saying, look, we want every scene to look like this. We want to have this medium shot, and then we want to go to a shot of him, or go to a shot of her in a close-up, and then switch the other way around, from him to her, or her to him, and then end up at the bottom with the establishing shot again of them talking together. So we send this back to the production company and then they change their editing and change their framing to match what we want. Okay, so that's working with talent. It's really great to work with talent. Don't be afraid. And if you have some budget, don't 
try to save money on something that's so important. Everyone will tell you, ah, don't worry, just get some students to shoot the video. No problem, it's easy. My students are happy to do it. But my answer would be the quality you're gonna get from actors and actresses that you pay, and it's not super expensive. You might be surprised, it's very reasonable. But the quality you get is much better. And you get it in more than one way. You get it in the time you save because they're professional. They don't waste time. They don't sit around not knowing what to do. They don't have a bad attitude. And you also save money because you're getting a great value. So I would suggest go with professional talent whenever you can. Good luck with your production. So remember, you want your talent to look as good as possible through some makeup, something like this, maybe some lights in the eyes, but then you also want your talent to know when to begin and when to stop and how much time they've used up. So those are very practical. Lastly, I want to talk about the green screen. Now we use the green screen in the studio all of the time. And you're, it helps your talent to look good by giving them a really fancy background. And one thing we can do is have a green screen like this that we can carry around. It's pretty small. It's in a bag. It opens up. Now I'm showing you the blue side. This screen has two sides, a blue side and a green side. But if I show you the green side, it'll be transparent because I'm using a green screen behind it. So that's not going to work. But the blue you can see. So you can carry this with you and it opens up to be as tall as a person. So very handy to have that. Now, of course, how's that useful for your talent? Well, if you go somewhere to shoot your video and maybe it's inside, maybe it's in the studio, or maybe it's in a little room, you can use the green screen behind them to help give a better look and to make them feel more confident to look better rather than a crappy background or something that looks very dull or boring. Okay, so those are ways in the studio and also outside that you can help your, your talent to be their best. So good luck with your shoot.